Dynamic Dungeons Editor and Player is a three-in-one application for game masters that includes editor, manager, and player. With Editor, you can create a storyline of videos and pictures for your role-playing game and map different backgrounds, PNG images, particle effects, and audio files. The other application is Manager, which will be your game master screen and runs on a machine that only you, the storyteller, can see. Once you're done with a map in Editor, you can play the saved story with the Manager, which lets you easily navigate through pre-made scenes, reveal parts of the fog of war, and adjust props while it's played in real time in the third app, Player. The Player application is automatically opened by the Manager, and move to the secondary display if you've connected it. Let's start with the Editor. The first time you launch it, you will be asked if you want to install the default asset pack, which contains generic backgrounds, different colored dungeon grids, and even some PNG props and particle effects. If you choose to download, the files will be downloaded to your default resources folder, which can be moved to another directory later by clicking on the Change Resources Folder button under Info. When you first open it, this window will show up. As you can see, there is only one defaults directory on the left where the default assets have been copied. By clicking New, you can create the story matrix, which by default is a 16-story project. You can, of course, overwrite the numbers to create a larger area. In the story matrix, you can scroll with the mouse. Press Shift to scroll horizontally. Click on one of the story positions to load a background video or background image into that location. The same works for drag and drop. You can drag files to any story position. As soon as you upload your own video or image, a user directory will be created on the left, where the selected media will be copied and a thumbnail will be generated. To find this directory on your machine, go to your user folder, Dynamic Dungeons, Editor, Resources, User. You can set cardinal directions from a given scene, make that position the starting point of the story, darken the entire scene with fog of war, and enter into the scene editor window with this little gear icon. There is also an additional icon, which opens the image editor window. In the image editor, you can scroll to zoom in and out and press shift and scroll to rotate the image. Once you have set the background, you can save the image by clicking the small disk icon. As you can see, the newly created image has already appeared in the user folder. Returning to the little gear icon we left out earlier, this leads to the editor's most important part, the scene editor. On the left side of the scene editor window, you will find a small torch icon that opens a browser. From here, you can access the PNG images and particle effects in the editor's prop folder and drag and drop them into the scene. The icon below will open the traditional browser window, but of course, you can also drag assets from outside into the scene editor window. Assets can include images, MP3 audio files, animations, and particle effects. These are DD's own file formats, and currently only a few particle effects and animations are available for the software, but I am constantly expanding the set. Clicking on the files dragged into the scene editor will open the prop panel, where you can access various functions. A prop can be annotated, scaled, and rotated. You can decide whether the prop should be immediately visible to the players when the scene is loaded. Local props appear only in this scene. Global props, on the other hand, will appear in every scene of the story. On the right, hierarchy panels are available, one for local props and one for global props, which will be used later. The grid editor is available at the bottom of the screen. Pressing the G hotkey will turn the grid on and off, and later during playback, pressing Shift and G will display this window on player, which in most cases is running on a TV. At different resolutions, the size of the grid may differ from what you set in the editor, so you may need to adjust it or calibrate it before making a map to set inch size squares or hexagons on your setup. In the upper part of the window, the props can be shadowed. By default, imported props in the editor are shifted to the scene without shadow and visible for players. The default appearance of props is adjustable in the editor under config. Props might be too big for your setup. To avoid having to set the desired size for each prop individually, you can set the default prop scale in Editor Config. In my setup, a value of 0.4 will result in the best grid size during playback. 
For more information about the other options available under the config button, refer to the help doc, available in the editor under info. If I set this up, the props dragged to the scene will be automatically scaled by 0.4. This only affects props, not video and image backgrounds. There are basically two types of dungeons created with Dynamic Dungeons Editor. One is the so-called One Scene, One Room mode, for which multiple modular packs are made with pre-designed video scenes available from my Patreon page. In this mode, I simply use the story view to build the dungeon. The other type is when you build the scene with multiple rooms and corridors using props and animations. Let's make a simple dungeon. I start with a black background and turn on Fog of War to this scene. Then I enter to the scene editor view. I pull in a prop, which is an 8x8 room. I duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D or Command D on Mac and insert a corridor element, which I send back. I can do the same in the hierarchy panel of local props. I drag and drop a torch animation and a spiderweb animation and a gateway, double them, rotate them, I also place another passageway here. and a corridor with stairs. This will be the entrance of the dungeon. I also pull in a pit trap, but I set it invisible for players because they will be surprised when I turn it on using Manager. Giant spiders lurking in the room are also invisible. I use PNG tokens that I found on the internet. I use the tokens as global props so I don't have to pull them into another scene separately. Finally, I apply a particle effect to one of the rooms. I quit the scene editor. I save the project. Then I click on the Play This Story button which, as you can see, immediately opens Manager and Player. The player window has moved to the secondary display, which is an extended screen. The manager is the game master screen, which now shows the scene that I set as the starting point in the story matrix within the editor. Nothing on TV yet because I activated fog of war in the scene. The manager application has opened two panels beside the game master screen. One is the story matrix and the other is the prop fog of war layer panel. Depending on which one it is set to, I can reveal the scene from below Fog of War or adjust the individual props. The players approach the first room. The perception check failed and I turn on the pit trap in the manager window. But if that wasn't enough, poisonous gas would flood the room. I simply set this particle effect visible for players. Thank you for watching. For more information, check out the links in the description or contact me on patreon.com/dynamicdungeons. Have a good time role-playing.